Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today's video is going to be on a viewer comment. Today's comment comes from Coinhound4. Let's check it out. Coinhound says, I would like to see an in-depth video on zeroing scopes. What is the best distance to zero? What happens out past that distance and before the set zero distance? Can you use a rifle scope on a PCP? How long will a scope last on a Springer? Should the scope be mounted as close to the gun as possible? How about scopes with bells and whistles? When are they needed and when are they a waste of money? A lot of questions in there. Let's get into it. Short answer here, yes, you can use a rifle scope on a PCP. We're probably talking about center fire rifle scopes here. So the thing to consider is that a center fire scope doesn't have a parallax adjustment in some cases. And if it does, oftentimes they only go down to 25 or 50 yards. So you have to be concerned about what the minimum distance requirement you need to get a clear image of your target is. So make sure that you get a scope that has a parallax adjustment that accommodates that. It's going to depend on so many factors that it's going to make it impossible to answer 100% of the time. That said, there are some things to consider when you are buying a scope for a spring piston or a gas piston gun. So the first thing to consider here is the warranty. You wanna make sure that the manufacturer warranties the scope if it does break or have a problem when used on a spring piston or gas piston rifle. Two, you wanna make sure that it's a scope that is obviously rated for use on a spring piston or a gas piston rifle. Most scopes are, they say air gun rated or Springer rated or something like that on the manufacturer's website. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, Leapers, Athlon, Hawk, and Mantis scopes that Pyramid Air sells are all going to be spring piston and gas piston rated. The last thing to consider is the amount of money you're spending, okay? You get what you pay for. You spend a little bit more money, you're gonna get a better quality scope built on a better chassis that's hopefully going to last longer. Is that a guarantee? Of course not. Any spring piston or gas piston gun has the capability to break just about any scope you put on it. But spending a little bit more money means better quality, which means you're going to have a better life expectancy. So this is another very opinionated question here. So for a bell and a whistle, what I consider a bell or a whistle might not be what you consider one. That's okay. For me, I'm gonna take this a little bit different direction. Let's talk about the things that I think are absolutely necessary on an air rifle scope. So number one is going to be a parallax adjustment of some sort. Now we have an adjustable objective here on this Leapers UTG. You also have side parallax adjustment where it's on that little side turret, which is a bit more convenient in my opinion, but you're gonna spend a little bit more money to get it. Either way, I want a scope that has an adjustable parallax down to 10 yards so I can resolve an image, make it nice and clear from 10 yards and out. Another thing that I consider an essential feature is a mill dot or some other type of holdover reticle. So I really prefer it, some people may not, but for me, a mill dot or something with hash marks, something is going to be really essential for a lot of what I do with air guns because I wanna be able to shoot at various distances without having to actually click adjust my point of impact. If I had to think about some bell and whistle type features that really aren't essential to me, uh, something like a turret locking mechanism like we have on this Leapers UTG scope right here that actually stops your turrets from adjusting so they don't get bumped or something like that. Um, it's a nice feature. Is it an essential? Not for me. Might be for you though. The other one is an illuminated reticle feature. A lot of people like them, but it's also very underutilized. So really depends on what you're doing with your gun and scope combo, you know, whether you're using it in low light or some situation where you might need that. But again, something that could be considered a bell and a whistle, but it's also found common on a lot of scopes. But is it essential? I don't know. That's up to you. So I'm going to split this into two parts here. In terms of what the best distance to zero at, it's 100% dependent on what you're doing with your gun and your scope. So if you know that you got a bird feeder in the backyard, that you got some pests that keep attacking or something like that at 20 yards, zero your gun at 20 yards, guys. It's really simple in that kind of scenario. But if you know that you're shooting at multiple distances, what I often recommend is that people zero the gun for the apex of their trajectory. Now, that's also a factor of not just your pellet and your velocity and things like that, but your scope height as well. So before we head out to the range and show you what your trajectory looks like past and before your zero point, 
We also want to show you guys what the impact of having your scope mounted either closer or further away from the center line of the bore means, which is Coinhound's last question. So, to do that, before we head out to the range, I'm going to introduce you to my Walther LG300. Now, this is a 10 meter gun. It's only shooting about 580 feet per second with an 8.4 grain pellet. So very, very slow. But we're going to go ahead. I just mounted this Hawk Air Max 34 to 16 scope on it. We're going to go out and get it zeroed on camera for you guys, show you that process. And then we'll go ahead and shoot it closer and further than our zero point and show you what kind of impact that this two inch scope height has on the trajectory. First thing we're going to do, without touching our scope adjustments, is go ahead, take a shot here. Now you want to hold dead center on the bowl. Okay, so you can see we went way the heck off to the right and just a touch high. So we're going to go ahead and dial in our up adjustment here. And that looks about right. And now we're gonna go ahead and crank it all the way over. Now we'll see if we have enough adjustment to compensate. In layman's terms, sighting in your scope is just matching your point of aim to your point of impact. Almost there. All right, so you notice how we are now dead on our last shot, which is exactly what you wanna do. And we don't even have to use our target. We can actually use that point if we want to. Because theoretically, we should be able to put it through the same hole. What do you know? Perfect. All right, so now that we've made our adjustment here over to our original point of impact, we're gonna go ahead and recenter everything and take another shot. And we should be very, very close, if not dead center. Pretty much dead on, maybe a tad left. We can always adjust out for that. We'll take another one just to verify. And right through the same hole. Pretty satisfied with that zero. All right, so now we're gonna see what our pellet does at our closest distance of 10 yards. Let's take a look. All right, so about two mil dots low there. And again, just off to the left, but right about that second mil dot. So we know that if we wanna hit dead center on a target, we need to be two mil dots below the center. All right, so now we've got our target out at 40 yards here. So just to give you an idea of what the trajectory looks like all the way out at 40, let's take a shot and see. So you can see that's about three mil dots down, just off to the left. I'm not very concerned with the right left, but you can see that's a much more pronounced trajectory uh, out at distance than we had at that 10 yard target. Let's take another one just to see what happens here. And again, just a little bit lower there, but still right around that third mil dot. So again, you can see how much more pronounced the trajectory is here uh, out of distance as opposed to 10 yards. You know, 40 yards is quite a ways further for a gun that's only shooting about 600 feet per second. So with our Hawk Air Max 30 mounted, it's got a 50 millimeter bell, so we have to use high rings to make sure it clears the barrel. That puts us at about a two inch scope height. So that's what we're gonna use here. The red line at zero represents the center line of your scope. So because of that two inch scope height, we do create an apparent rise as we shoot. So with our 25 yard zero and our two inch bore height, we're hitting about a half inch low at 10 yards. And you'll notice as we start to get further out in our trajectory, right, right around 15 yards, we hit what we call our flat spot or the apex of our trajectory. That's that top end of the pellet's path. And it produces a very flat area. So if we were gonna translate this to a target, we're basically gonna be zeroed from about 15 all the way out to the back end of our flat spot at around 25 yards before we start to experience any drop. Now you guys can see that once we get to that 25 yard point in the back end of our zero distance, the pellet drops pretty dramatically after this. At 40 yards, we're experiencing about two and three quarter inches of drop, which is pretty significant. That's a lot of compensation you're gonna have to do. And as you guys saw, about three mil dots in our scope. So to illustrate what increasing the scope height would do to our setup here, you can see with a four inch scope height, we would actually hit our apex around the same 20, 25 yard point. 
but it's a much shorter distance that we're zeroed at now. So where with the two inch scope height, we had a nice flat spot from about 15 to 25 yards. Now we only have that flat spot from about 21 out to 25, 26 yards. So it's a much shorter area that our gun's going to be zeroed at. You can see how much more compensation we have to do on the short end leading up to the apex of our trajectory. The benefit of that higher mounted scope though is that we have a much less pronounced drop off past our zero distance. So if you're doing a lot more long range shooting, a higher mounted scope may actually benefit you where you're going to have to compensate a lot less where it counts at further distances. All right guys, that about wraps it up for this look at scopes today. Hopefully it answered some questions you guys might've had. Coinhound, thank you for submitting the question. We had a lot of fun doing this video here and putting everything together. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. We'll see you guys at the next one. Thanks for tuning into today's video. Hit us with a like and subscribe down below. Feel free to leave a comment if you so desire and tune in for the next one. We'll see you guys then.